Hello, wild ones. It's Heather Lynn. Welcome to the Wild Witchery. And today we are exploring mushrooms and moss, their correspondences, how to use them magically, and of course, how to transform those correspondences into some beautiful magical crafting pieces. Today's video, yes, you heard it right, is a collaboration with Magical Crafting. And I am so excited. She makes the coolest stuff. If you want to learn hands-on, she is an artist. She has a gazillion videos, hence the popularity of her channel on just spells, rituals, just kind of like DIY galore for the modern a magical witch. And you're going to want to check out her latest video on moss and mushroom magical crafting. Click the link above to get there fast after you watch this video. Amy from Magical Crafting is one powerful witch and you're going to want to check out her work. Get ready and maybe grab a cup of tea on this one. Maybe even some mushroom tea. <laughs> I actually have some mushroom tea that I'm brewing right now as we're preparing for this journey together into some beautiful projects that I just can't wait to show you. Welcome, as many of you are likely visiting from the amazing channel Magical Crafting, I wanted to start this video off with just that. And so the build up I usually provide will be talked about shortly. I want to give you some witch history and mushroom correspondences too. All of this knowledge you can apply to your craft straight away. We are taking a few moments to combine energies of the forest to make this forest witch mirror mirror on the wall. Who's the most magical of them all? Well, you. Perhaps they're listening. This mirror was wood burned by hand and then hot glue was used to create this look. The whole piece took about two hours to create and each item is for a specific purpose. And that's what I love about being a forest witch. Everything has meaning, everything has a purpose. In fact, there were things that were beautiful that I wanted to put on but was like, no, that doesn't have that meaning that I need because this is a sacred magic mirror now. I even have a mirror for the Fae and a little spot for them to sit and look upon themselves the way I look upon myself with magic and whimsy and the forest always holding my hand. If I were to give you an overall magical definition of mushrooms and how to use them in your craft. I would definitely say that mushrooms are the master communicator. When you think about a forest, you think about its trees, you think about its low level animals and plants, and it is a system that works together harmoniously and sometimes not, but there are energies that combine. A forest is unique to its own. And mushrooms serve as a communicator in many ways, specifically for trees. So I like to think of mushrooms as a way to awaken connections and to build connections, to work with communication in various levels. Perhaps we're trying to open up the channels of communication to someone or something. I think mushrooms in general can help you to open up your mind's eye, your third eye, your intuition. I love how the crows are just screaming right now because it's just, it just affirms to me how important it is for anybody out there listening to hear that just because something is a little bit different or something is a little bit um, of an obstacle, right? Because we have to do more research, we have to explore. When it comes to mushrooms, there is so many different ways to use them in your practice, and it doesn't necessarily mean you have to eat them. And you're probably curious as to if I have, or if I will in the future eat mushrooms. I do eat wild mushrooms um, for edible purposes, 
I have eaten mushrooms for medicinal purposes and I will continue, of course. I highly recommend if you are a beginner with mushrooms that you go very slowly and that you do not consume any mushrooms until you have taken classes, spent time in identification. It's extremely important, specifically with mushrooms, to really know what you're doing and even magically to be aware of what's poisonous to the touch that's really important when it comes to mushrooms mushroom building in your practice can happen but just remember that it should be a slow process so the book that you're seeing on the screen right now is a book that i've been working with this summer and i think it's quite quite brilliant <laughs> it's a little gem of a book that really speaks to the wild witch for sure and i do recommend it if you're going to work with mushrooms I'm going to showcase various bits of information from this book and how I've used it in my magical practice. Now, we all have our interpretations of elements and how they intermingle into each of the plants that we work with. If you're a plant witch like me, you know what I'm talking about. There are layers. It's not like, oh, there's water in this plant and so therefore it has all of these elements of water. No, 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 that's not how it works. <laughs> you have to understand the nature of the plant itself and then further layer on top the knowledge that you have about the elements. So when it comes to moss, we're thinking about aeration, the element of air. I'm thinking in congruence with moss, the ability to allow, the ability to move. Air can be very flighty, it can be very gone with the wind and very strong but i think in combination with water which moss all moss has this watery quality because can hold so much water you really have this element of water kind of overlaying so when we think about water we think of destructive forces chaos you can think of um, moss as one that can hold that chaos back it can contain uh, difficulty and challenges you think about water, I mean, I think about water as being purifying, cleansing. So moss can also take on those meanings if you want to work with those correspondences in relation to moss. Now mushrooms, that's a whole big subject. I could do probably 20 videos on mushrooms and never get to the tip of the iceberg. But I thought, let's try. The following is mushrooms I found in August on a few hunts for witchcraft supplies, and I have shared some correspondences with you for some of them. Enjoy, wild ones. We are going to end with a little craft to hold on to some of your first magical mushrooms if you decide to collect your own and begin to learn as I have. Complete with faux fake leaves of fall, this is such a lovely magical crafting experience for any artistic witch.
I want to thank Amy from Magical Crafting for inspiring such wonderful crafts for my Wild Forest Witch Apothecary. Do check out her video as well for more inspiration. Blessings to your magic wild ones and come and find me again.